the world is going right. Okay, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's just the beginning. Oh, it's just the beginning. It's not the end. Mm -hmm. And worse to come. Sorry. There is more to come. Yes, of course. What happened in Italy in last September mm -hmm. uh, is going to happen uh, in Spain very soon, mm -hmm. uh, in Germany very soon, probably in France, in, in Sweden already happened. In uh, the States? Yeah, uh, in the States and so on. So uh, is, this, uh, is this the coming back of fascism? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't think so. If we look at fascist, fascism sorry, as an historical mm -hmm. uh, formation. But is it the coming back of Mussolini? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say yes, it is. Uh, in which way? In the way that Mussolini uh, a, it has been not only the founder of fascist movement and party, and dictatorship, but even the first uh, populist leader mm -hmm. of modern times. The point is that every time that history drives uh, to a crisis, like Mussolini uh, understood very well, people want goes to the, um, the 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 strong colors. He used to say the the banner well uh, with with the strong color, red or black. Okay, and, and we are at the same uh, moment of history as 100 years ago. We are in a crisis. We are in a crisis for many reasons. No? And now people don't listen to the sophisticated uh, argument of liberal and Democrats, and they still want primary colors, uh, red or, or, or black. They prefer a, a, a rhetoric of fear to a rhetoric of hope. It's the last thing I want to say that um, makes Mussolini the father of every populist leader nowadays. Mussolini came from the Socialist Party. Okay? He was a very beloved leader of the Socialist Party. The Socialist Party was the party of hope. No, the great 19th century idea that the life of our son and daughters uh, uh, would be better than ours, and so on. Hope, the rising sun. Mussolini was kicked out of the Socialist Party, and um, uh, uh, after the World War, he, uh, he understands w uh, one simple things, terrifying things, that there is only one political passion stronger than hope, and that is fear. So he bets everything on fear. On fear of what? Fear of other people's hopes. And so that, that's, that's the drill, okay? One problem, not many problems. We don't need a parliament you know, that represents the complexity of society and of our problems. There is only one problem. That problem is an enemy, and that enemy is a foreigner, you know? And the foreigner used to be socialist at the time, and immigrants nowadays. If you see all the populist leaders, of course, when, when they size power, they do many things. But when they campaign, Okay, they campaign on one thing, yeah. immigration, enemy, fear, invasion. Yeah, but there's another important way briefly to say what you just said, which is that the modern period is not as different as the pre-modern period as we think it is. In other words, you look at these elements that come into play in the war on liberalism and the resurgence of fascistic things, and what do you see? You see the fear of difference, Mm -hmm. You see the fear of the other. You see resentment of the privileged. You see the love of power. You see this um, archaic sense of the group. In other words, it's very important, and this goes to what you said before, yes, um, we, there was a rupture in the modern period and everything was, there was the enlightenment and so on. But, you know, at, Virginia Woolf wrote once that human nature changed on February 21st, 1910. It's one of the stupidest sentences that anybody ever wrote. And human nature did not change. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you see in the resurgence of fascism, it's a kind of atavism. It's a return to fundamental qualities, if you want to say, of the human heart or of human life together with other human <coughs> beings, that no amount of rationality and technology and industry is ever going to erase. Fascism is a modern phenomenon. I think, that, I think it builds on atavistic uh, 
trends of human conditions, such as a friend-enemy distinction and the fear of, of difference. But at the same time, fascism, it's a, a modern phenomenon because it is another face of democracy. It's another possibility, the darker possibility of democracy. And it's the possibility of homogeneity, of uh, being afraid of singularity, being afraid of individualism. And that's why uh, fascism, it's uh, a 20th and 21st century phenomenon. That's why there are so many historical analogies between the 1920s and 1930s and the present, because we are in a democratic era. And so democracy can take those two phases. And I think when in the middle, we're right now in the middle of a, of a battle between two interpretations of, of democracy, whether democracy is about popular sovereignty and all the implications that has in terms of homogeneity and also cult of a leader, uh, or if democracy is about pluralism and individuality and institutions and distinctions and separation of powers. But in a way, historically, both are consequences of democracy. Nationalism, mm -hmm. nationalism mm -hmm. without its ugly problems, it's a consequence of democracy, of the idea that mm -hmm. the sovereign people, it's sovereign, so it has to have a certain identity. And in order to have a certain identity, it has to share certain common cultural features, imagined or real or artificial. And so much of the horrors we have seen in the 20th century in terms of totalitarianism, in terms of fascism, in terms of communism, are also consequences of modernity and, uh, and democracy and popular sovereignty.